Hello, this is Anna from Madame Son. Today we have a series of tutorials for beginner quilters. Our project is going to be how to make a pillow cover, a quilted pillow cover, um, and we're going to learn, you know, everything from making the blocks to, you know, putting it together into a top, quilting, and then turn it into a cover with the zipper in the back. So I'll, I'll show you how to insert the zipper as well. But for today, for part one, what we're going to learn is how to make half square triangles, which is one of the simplest blocks you can make and one of the most versatile, if not the most versatile. You know, it's used in very traditional quilting. It's usually part of beautiful stars, uh, but it's also used in very modern quilting quilts that use, you know, lots of negative space and just have like some striking shapes uh, using the, the half square triangles. It's really deceptively simple because combined with plain squares, it really makes some stunning, stunning quilts. Um, so, you know, it's, it's something very useful in your quilting arsenal. And the technique that I want you to learn is how to chain piece, which you can use not only for half square triangles, but for other kinds of blocks down the line. And it will really make you much more efficient and will make it make quilting less tiring and less tedious. So let's just get to it. So for part one, you're going to need your non-slip ruler, a rotary cutter, quarter inch boot, your heat erasable marking pen in a color that will contrast with your fabric, pins, a quarter yard background fabric, four fat eighths for your prints, and some heavy spray starch. Here are my fabrics and I chose a few more prints that I'm going to need just to have extra squares to play with my design and then I'll just use it for other projects. But they're mostly in shades of gray except for this one that's also sort of neutral in navy blue but it has these nice little shots of pink and green and then I found almost exactly the same green so I'll, I'll see if I use it in the end but I like to add a little shot of color to my neutrals. So here's my first fat eighth. I folded it matching the um, selvage here okay so that I get a straight jet if you're fat eighth and sometimes they don't have um, a selvage jet just you know try to fold it as squarely as you can if you have a print you can use the print for reference if not it's going to be so small that it really is not you know a deal breaker but try to have a straight edges as much as you can because it will help you with the sewing later so I'm lining up any of the lines in my ruler with the selvage edge, not with the fringe, but with the actual edge of the fabric right above the fringe or right where the fringe starts. And I'm going to press safety off my cutter and just make a clean cut. And now I know, come on, I know that I have a nice square angle here. All right, and I'm left-handed, so I have my rotary cutter on my left. Um, so now I'll turn it over, and I'll do the same thing on this edge. Now I know that this edge is straight, so I'm going to repeat the process. And actually, I have a pretty nice edge, but still I'm going to just trim that tiny little bit. And now I'm going to turn it so that I can align my ruler here. So I'm going to make five inch squares, which means I need an extra. My ruler is six inches wide, so I have an inch loose on this end, making sure that it's really nicely aligned, that it's aligned here. And, you know, if you want to be extra safe, just your ruler there and I'm gonna make my cut turn it and repeat the process oh it's so nice when everything is so nicely squared um, so we're giving us we're giving ourselves a little extra room we're cutting five inch squares although our final blocks are going to be four and a half inches, but it's, and that's ex precisely to be able to square them off later and, you know, account for our errors now, but the better, the more exact you are during the whole process, you know, the better your outcome. So here we have our first 
two squares in the first print. And we're going to do the same with all the other prints, uh, you know, cutting two squares of each one. And then we'll need eight squares of the white. All right, so let's do that and I'll see you on the other end. All right, now that I have all my squares cut, it's time to mark. And we're only going to mark the white squares. And it's just a very, very simple thing. We are going to use our ruler to go from corner to corner. And I am allowing myself just a little room to account for the tip of the, to account for the tip of the pen. And let me just show you how amazing these heat erase pens are. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? I love them. I really love them. Um, it's just such a clean, easy way to mark. All right. I'm holding my ruler. And I'm simply... And, you know, we're going to... We're not even going to sew, we're going to cut over it, so you could use even a Sharpie if you wanted. Although, why you want to, would you want to do that when you have these fabulous gel pen markers? They slide so nicely on the fabric. All right, so I'm just going to put them aside. Mark them all. When I have all my whites marked, all eight of them. The next thing I'm going to do is stack them and get them ready for sewing. So, on this white fabric, there is no wrong or right side. If there was a wrong or right side, I would mark it on the wrong side. And then I would stack them, one print right side up, the background fabric wrong side up. And then I just need one pin. That's all we really need here. Okay, and just set them aside, go for the next one. When you're stacking them, stack them so that your lines are all pointing in the same direction. Don't stack them like this. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it makes the process later when you're chain piecing, it makes it a little more um, smooth. Okay, so we're gonna do this with all of our squares and then we'll take them to the sewing machine. All right, so I'm gonna change my foot. I'm not going to use my quarter inch foot with guide because it means that I would have to lift it in between my squares and that's what I want to avoid. I am going to use my regular quarter inch foot. All right, so. Hold on, I'm just gonna put this here. So I have my stack here, okay? They're all, as I said, they're all, my lines are pointing up because I'm just going to be picking them up and feeding them into the machine without stopping. So first thing I'm gonna do, I am going to line up the line that I drew there with the quarter inch edge, okay? I'm not, feeding. I'm not sewing on that line. That's not what the line is there for. I am going to sew twice on each side of the line and then I'll cut and I'll have two squares. Okay. So line it up with your quarter inch edge. Okay. And now simply sew. Remove your pins as you come to them. And when you get to the end, simply pick up your next triangle. You're not cutting, you're not moving, you're lining up that corner again. And you're just going to continue sewing. And moving your pins. Next one, same thing, align it. Remember, you're not aligning it with the needle, you're aligning it with the edge of the foot. Oh, that went too far. Um. 
Now try not to go too fast and keep, I was messing up there, that's why I'm telling you. Um, try to keep your line, um, you know, as nicely aligned as you can. We're going to square off our squares later, precisely because it's impossible, you know, for every seam to be exactly accurate. So, you know, we're accounting for that and we'll re-square them all. But, you know, the more accurate you are now, the easier it will be down the line. All right, and here we are. We've gotten to the end. Oops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> to the end of our chain. And this is exactly why it's called chain piecing. You just saw my long, nice little chain that I have. So I'm still holding the last one. And all I'm going to do is bring it back and align it in exactly the same way. Again, now I'm starting at the other end, but my line is going to be aligned in the exact same spot as before. And now it will be a little easier as we come, because one, we don't have pins, and two, they're already chained together. They will flip sides, so some of them will come to you right side up, but you know, just be aware and flip them as you get to them. Veering off a little bit here. Let's just see. And my next one is already joined. I just need to. Don't do what I was doing, which is getting distracted by the following triangle. Just get to the end of one and then position the you know, the one that's coming to you. This, you know, it's just a trial chain, so I'm not too worried about it. But when you're doing your real project, be careful and don't get distracted by the next one. Just keep your eye on what you're doing. All right, now we have our little chain and we're gonna separate these squares. Okay, I have a short chain here just to show you. And now the magic starts. So we're going to cut right on this line. And you'll see. Now you're going to see the magic happen. Next thing to do is to press them. And I like to press the same with a little steam and now I'm going to iron towards the print so I'm gonna have the print on top in fact let me just turn them all over so it'll make it faster and now I'm going to open it and gently iron away and I'm also going to give it a shot of starch to make it just to give it a little extra stability we're gonna be handling them a lot so it's a nice thing to do to avoid, you know, having them lose too much of their shape. Here they are. Next thing we're going to do is to, um, you know, square them off, make sure that they're four and a half by four and a half inches, and then we'll be ready to start joining them. Um, and just a little tip when you're working, putting together blocks, it's nice to do every step in a block meaning you know you cut all your squares first then you mark all your white squares together then you stack them then you pin them you know and and you can like save yourself some time when you're doing the same kind of work um all together so now i'm just going to press them all and i have them all with the print side up all facing the with the um point facing me so that i can quickly you know, just get done with this part of the process. You know, just a quick thing, quick shot of starch, dry it out and on to the next one. You know, move it out of my way and the next one is ready in position. And when you do this at every step, it really does streamline the process and make it, you know, a little faster. 
and especially if you do it like I'm doing here where I'm cutting squares for more than one project you know I cut a lot more squares than I need for the pillow um, and this is going to mean that then I can start working on a quilt top whenever I want and I have all my squares are ready to go okay so now it's time to figure out our design and see how we want to work with all these prints actually before we get to play with our design there's one more step we need to square them off to square our um, blocks off and remember that we made them five by five to give us you know give ourselves a little extra room for error and now it's time to bring them down to that four and a half by four and a half um, so you can use your big ruler and what the only thing you're going to want to do is to use the corner without the angle lines. If you see this edge, it has all these angle lines for making angle cuts, but you're gonna use the clear one. So you need to simply align your ruler. And there are two things that you need to check. One, wow, look, this one really got very wonky. Look at how wonky this line is over here. Look how angled it is. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna make them four and a half. Okay, so you want to make sure that your your four and a half mark falls within the fabric. Okay, you don't want it to be off the fabric because then your square is going to be too small. So you want to make sure of that first and same at the bottom here. Okay, let's see two. This is my half line. So I'm barely making it, although I have more room there. So I'll just slip it up. And then you want to make sure that your diagonal seam is hitting. See how you have this? Uh, joins here where the squares meet so you want to make sure that your line is hitting those empty spots there okay and that's how you know that you're having that you have a nice you know even square with nice square angles and so here it's pretty straight I'm barely cutting anything off mostly just that here and some stray threads and I'm gonna cut this side all right, and I'm just going to turn it and I'm going to repeat the same thing. But now that I have a, squ a square angle here, I can just line up my four and a half. That's my half. And my half inch right here. So I have half inch and half inch right there. And now I can. So it's almost nothing. What happened here? Oh, I moved it. Yes, okay, we're good. So here is your beautifully squared. Okay, and obviously we're gonna need to do the same with all our other squares. Well, that was it for today. I hope it's been useful. I hope you, you know, you've discovered half square triangles and chain piecing, and they'll be useful to you in the future. And I really hope you you know, continue playing with us and I'll see you in the next installment where we'll learn to put together the pillow top and the, and then we'll um, talk a lot about designing and moving blocks around and how, you know, all the different things that, well, not all the different things you can do. There's no end to those, but I'll give you quite a few examples of different designs that you can create just using these simple blocks. So I hope to see you there. As always, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments, follow us on Instagram. We have lots of fun things going on and we have a great Facebook group with fellow quilters where you can, you know, ask questions and share ideas and just, you know, enjoy fellow quilters. So I hope to see